Good morning friends I am once again your president Mr Raghavendra Das Roni people know me by we are again discussing what old grants were today I'll be discussing in three different videos of the types of grants which came across me to rebrush what I just said in my earlier videos you know this grant word actually is being defined by our legal luminaries and advocates and the judiciary uh, well the britishers did what they wanted to under the grant act which came way in 1880 uh, 1895 and we are a grant of 1836 why doesn't anybody in the judiciary or in the legal luminary actually explain the court that 1895 was ne- not uh, an act which was made with retrospective uh, doings of from 1803 even if 1836 is or a governor general order is a statutory law we have to define grant as what it meant in 1803 or 36 and what it means in 1895 so well so as per these first type of grants which i speak on are these revenue assignments were these revenue assignments in the form of the rent which was given back to the owners were these because they were, therefore these were private properties or private lands basically in the non regulation territories or whether even in the regulation territories well let's put it like the state which came under the bengal bombay or madras presidency non regulation was punjab so are these those territories which or where the britishers remained under a capacity of an advisor to the ruler what i said in the earlier part that when the diwani in 1765 or 70 was being shifted the british were just the in a kind of an advisory capacity where is it written it is written in imperial gazette of india so talking of the original nature of these grants or where the you know the origin of these oriental natured grants grants imply that rulers had permitted the owners of land to do something special on his freehold ownership in possession land this is reproduced in the house accommodation act bill of 1898 where further it said in 1902 that the word grant or the grantee would be replaced for addressing us by owners why so these are some questions these grants or this grant allowed to retain the revenue share he owed to the government from the income he generated from his own free land was this statement which i gave allowed by the britishers this is all presumption based everywhere we have a presumption ki the grantees were freehold terms or were they old grants what does the glr even today speaks is the word called old grant why doesn't it speak of the new grant so we need to go by this now if we go under a disobedience of the directions which were laid under the law that is the house accommodation act bill which further became a act of 1902 and then 1923 what we supposed to be replaced by the word grantee to owners why won't we done why are we still illegally called old grant so where is those records so friends during this period a lot of books were which were consulted which were read and which were you know brought by me naming to begin with imperial gazette of 1887 1902 page 227 lord of landlords and tenants 1902 if you read the supplementary chapter 6 on page 218 you know 
कंटोनमेंट लॉज वच आई हैव मैंशन अर्लियर बाई जे पी मित्तल नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स एडिशन वेर इट इज़ प्रोड्यूसिंग द गवर्नमेंट ग्रांट एक्ट ऑफ फिफ्टीन ऑफ एटीन नाइन्टी फाइव अगेन एन सेक्शन टू ऑफ सिक्स सेवन एट पेज रीड पेज सिक्स सेवन वन वट इज ई से अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टी दिस इज जे पी मित्तल वी कैन रीड टी पी ए एक्ट एटीन एटी टू इन कल्बिनेशन विद द सी एल ए रूल्स कैटेगरी रूल फोर कैटेगरी सी लैंड वी कैन ऑल्सो रीड इन स्पेसिफिक रूल सी एल ए नाइनटीन थर्टी सेवन फोर्टी थ्री वी कैन ईवन रीड कैंट and section 73 what does it say finally there is an act called rape act 1952 passed after the constitution with a retrospective effect we can read page 966 and section 6 and 7 of the same book so there is so many things now if you we read the rape act now this act says this act says by itself that the government don't have the grant papers or the title papers so the act comes in force only if they find the document of grant at any time they will start under repack acquisition of these properties section 3 says no notice can be issued to such properties so we just need to read these kind of books be more aware of the house owners and tenants grants as referred to crown act grant act and we were revenue free grants from the treaty of 1809 this is i'm talking of sit satluj in the bill there was a provision which was laid upon owners the burden of proving that they hold their grants under special connivance and ought to be subject to the provisions which are in connivance with the military requirements dictate in a loyalty which had been set aside for military purpose as this was opposed by the non official members of the council government gave it up but without prejudice to the position taken up by it that all lands in cantonments belong to government so this is again countered by this statement of the government in the parliament the written instrument regarding our grants in a case where the written instrument conveying the grant of a site is forthcoming land is admitted by owners to be government property then it may be considered that this that the site is subject to the rules in such case the date of the original grant should first be ascertained why then how purchases can take place in even after refusing to take admission deeds or lease deeds now i'll just explain you as an example a proposed to buy a bungalow in a cantonment and applied for the sanction from of the local military authority to the proposed transfer he was informed that sanction would be given if he agreed to sign a document making the house available on demand for occupation agreed to condone the offence if a in the first instant fail to comply with the stipulation and purchased the house always li liable to appropriation for a military officer and a the man who was asking for permission agreed to build a second libel appropriation for a military officer and a was requested to take two leases in accordance with the provision of the cantonment codes of the site now just look at the stipulations being enforced on a he was first asked that your every deed would be condoned provided you are willing to rent your bungalow or give it to the military officer posted in the cantonment two if you are not willing to give it you will create a second building for it this a declined to do and was threatened with resumption of the site he thereupon thereupon then appealed the army headquarter where is it written read cant manual 1909 the original builder of the bungalow applied in writing 
for the site in 1843 and sanction was conveyed in writing subject to the conditions laid down in a governor general order of 260 of 7th may 1838 so that means there is a grant given under a ggo which is after 1836 Now this is where Cantonment House Accommodation Act 1902 was applied to that party of a cantonment in which the bungalow is situated in 1919. That the house in question is not liable to appropriation under the provisions of the Act, as the government let a sanctioning of grant of the site in 1845. is a written instrument within the meaning of section 4 of the act which together with the application of the original builder reads with the ggo of 7th may 1838 constitutes a contract in writing uh, it's very important to understand the conditions of which it could not be altered except by an act of the legislature superseding them this was done by an act of 1902 how many people actually understood this para what i said it's a big question mark because you know it took me a lot of time when i used to ask major chawan what actually are they trying to read through the lines it's written it's bibled in a cantonment act but you know some people you know i remember somebody joking that ronnie's gone mad that house accommodation acts applicability proves that we are not a grant of any of the ggos and people didn't want to agree again try and watch my video this very part of it a notification declaring that the act shall be obtuned in a certain portion of the cantonment is not a consent to that act should apply to the house which is included in the portion yes this is that part which says even if house accommodation act was made applicable on my entire cantonment with a boundary or with a bylaw it would not mean that my bungalow or my private estate old grant was subjected to house accommodation act. that's very important we'll read this if you don't understand get back to me now law of landlords and tenants i've already spoken i come back again on what house accommodation at section 3 clause 5 of the cantonment act bill said 1898 provides that all land situated in cantonment shall be presumed to belong to the government unless it is it be proved to belong to some private so it is saying this ownership of lands in cantonments under house accommodation has was left as no grant paper work forthcoming just imagine in 1898 the britishers are accepting it's in the parliamentary reports in shimla to it and reframed from arming itself with an artificial legal presumption does the act left the question of the ownership of the lands in cantonments where no grant was proved from the government such just where it was before it may be mentioned in this contention connection sorry that the bill used the term grantee for owners of houses in the cantonment was actually dropped and it was under section 2 clause f was change to owners this is in the honorable mr pog statement in 1899 what did he say the honorable pog moved that in clause 2 sub clause 1 of the bill as amended by the select committee the definition of the grantee be omitted he said i the word grantee am what i am called a fancy name and it has a definition wholly different from the ordinary meaning of the word with respect to land we know very well what grantee means according to the definition of the grantee in the bill a grant is not a grantee 
of the land but the grantee of a permission to do something upon it i propose with the aid of the other amendment to substitute instead of this word grantee the word owners throughout the bill so i hope now if you understand this part you will understand where and how the house accommodation act would actually come to a help that till 1898 if my bungalow was within the house accommodation act it couldn't have been a grant of the gto once again i'm saying we are old grants revenue free grants were never converted into free uh, old new grants by the britishers of the 1790 so no council of board of Di- uh, 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 what was it called? The board of directors who were to be constituted for the revenues converted our grants into new grants. Thank you. Good day.